Good morning. Welcome to the service of prayer and scripture reading coming to you from the Anglican Cathedral Church of All Saints, located in Halifax, Nova Scotia, on Thursday, April 20th. My name is Fred, one of the retired priests associated with this cathedral. Today is Thursday in the week of the second Sunday of Easter. Thomas, answering the risen Christ, said, my Lord and my God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. The psalm selected for this morning is Psalm 118, verses 14 through 29. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us, form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Holy and mighty God, your son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this for the sake of our risen Lord. The Gospel reading selected for this day is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, 
Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do you not doubt but believe? Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We all know about doubting Thomas. John's Gospel suggests that Thomas doubts because he has not seen the risen Christ. In the United States, Thomas would be said to come from the state of Missouri, the show me state, the state in which seeing is believing. Those who comment on or speak about this passage seldom ask the question, just what did Thomas doubt? Did Thomas doubt that the crucified Christ was risen? Or did he doubt something else, like that some claims made about the Jesus that he followed and loved were false? What evidence would satisfy Thomas and end his doubt? What is it that Thomas wants to see? Not only to see, but to feel with his hands. He's more than from Missouri. For him, seeing and feeling are believing. In his commentary on the Gospel of John, Raymond Brown suggests that John's Gospel gives us four slightly different examples of faith. The first, the beloved disciple comes to faith after seeing the burial wrappings in the tomb, but not Jesus. The second, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus, but does not recognize him until he calls her by name. The third, the disciples see him and believe. The fourth, Thomas wants to see and feel the wounds of crucifixion but according to the Gospel of John, Thomas seems to settle for seeing the wounds of crucifixion only. Ironically, it is this Thomas who is, ever, who is forever associated with doubt who makes the strongest and most astonishing confession of Christ in all of our Gospels. He sees the marks of crucifixion and believes and utters the, the confession, my Lord and my God. The Gospel of John turns Thomas's confession into the familiar beatitude. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. But because Thomas doubted, we now understand that the God who redeems the God we believe in, bears the marks of self-offering. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we receive the legacy of a living hope, born again not only from his death, but also from his resurrection, May we who have received forgiveness of sins through the Holy Spirit live to set others free until at length we enter the inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, where Christ lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.